it's interesting that uh, uh, Joshua Sherman brought up Romans 9 because Romans 10 is kind of where I was mm -hmm. thinking of focusing on. So I want to tie this back to the Exodus. Uh, may, I, think, I think Joshua Sherman will be able to pick this up. But what would you say is the moment in the Exodus account that most closely symbolizes Christ's uh, defeat of death or Hades? Uh, I, I guess there were there are kind of two uh, for me. Uh, uh, you could maybe compress them into one. Uh, one is going to be the death of the firstborn, um, but the the other, and this is probably where where, where you're looking yeah, at it, okay. is the crossing over the Red Sea. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so the crossing over the Red Sea is pretty important. Uh, one, because there's been some scholarship done on like, what does, what is the Red Sea? And some okay. of the things that, that have been done is that what they're actually talking about is the Sea of Reeds, mm -hmm. which very is very closely tied in kind of the Egyptian mythological uh, thought, their mythological milieu that that is the realm of the dead. So Moses is literally leading, literally and figuratively leading the uh, Israelites through the realm of the dead and out the other side. Yes. And uh, Pharaoh does not, uh, does not make it out the other side. Well, and, and not only that, but they go through on dry ground. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, woo, <laughs> you know. So, and they repeat they repeat the same going into the promised land in the end also yes, Jordan. yes. same yeah. uh, same symbolism yes but what i want to draw attention to is this weird verse but what paul does in romans uh 10 he starts off he's talking about uh the law in verse 5 uh, for moses writes about the righteousness that's based on the law that the person who does the commandments shall live by them but the righteousness that is based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven and that he has this aside, that is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. Uh, and that's verse uh, seven. So what do you think he's referencing there? He's, he's referencing an Old Testament passage. Does anybody know what that is? I actually don't. All right. So he's referencing... Deuteronomy 30, uh, 12 through 14. And so I found a nice thing on this. Uh, but in the Old Testament passage, it says, uh, Deuteronomy 30, 12 through 14, it is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us to get it for us and make us hear it, that we may observe it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea for us to get it for us and make us hear it that we may observe it. Uh, so have you you noticed the difference? You notice yes. It? What has Paul done? He's, he's replaced the word sea with abyss. So Jesus has descended into the abyss. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in, he's quoting the LXX, which has the word sea, and he's replaced that with the Greek word abyss. Mm -hmm. So... For Paul here, whatever this abyss is, it's tied to this idea of the sea. And you've already pointed out he's he's focusing in a little bit on this exodus and this crossing mm -hmm. the sea as coming out of death. Uh, and we we see the sea tied to death or uh, what is known as uh, Sheol in the Old Testament and uh, Hades in the New Testament. We we'll might get into that mm -hmm. a bit more soon. Uh, I'll let other people get into that uh, throughout the throughout the Old Testament. This is a common a common parallel. Well, they they talk about this land of the dead, and then they'll use like sea imagery, like the waves of death or the the deeps of uh, Sheol. Uh, and I think somebody mentioned did somebody mention Jonah? Yes, that's that's one of the big places where they talk about the sea yeah. as going to shale the, the depths of uh well let's not forget about what happened in uh in in, in noah's story here i mean that's that's kind of one of the mm -hmm. ultimate representations of uh Passing of through water. Death. yeah the waters being death like i i i feel like it's 
the like the you could even so you could even go so far as to say the ark plays something like the Christ that carries you through it's 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 mirrored in Passover. It's like this 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 theme is recurring throughout the entire scripture. Oh, if yeah. anybody and wants to if anyone wants to dive into this further, uh, Sherman and I actually have uh, done an episode prior on something like this that right. we've talked about the parallel specifically to Exodus too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can you can take this all the way back to Genesis one, where you have the emerging of this life out of the depths of the waters, right? Uh, and you can uh, you can tie this tie this further forward into other things as well, which I don't want to get into exactly this moment. But uh, so. Maybe uh, real quick, just because I see a comment that's related to it, right? Just for the ancient person, lots of water and open water is terrifying. You know, it, it's a place of chaos. You can't control life. There's lots of death, right? Yeah. Um, so it's related. So I, I see I see someone with the river Styx, right? Yam Suf, an Egyptian um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, mythology, yeah. religion. You know, it's a sea of reeds. It's also the sea of the border. You had to cross the border to the afterlife. You had to go through there. And if you didn't do it right, you were grabbed by your ancestors and drowned forever. You know, that, that shows up in Babylon. That shows up in Ugarit. Um, mm -hmm. Water, a watery place that also represents death is all over. Yeah. Well, and speaking of Jonah, right, you know, um, we, we have these translations that like to really whitewash things. But um, now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the whale uh, of, of the fish three days and three nights. The word there in, that's uh, that's translated, at least uh, in, in the Greek uh, Old Testament, the translation there is is Kitas, which can also be a sea monster. <laughs> right. Uh, and we see sim similar things in, in Hebrew that like. You know this stuff. We're we're not just talking about Leviathan being a dinosaur. We're talking about Leviathan being a chaos monster. We're talking about it playing in the sea, playing in death. Like all of this kind of imagery with the waters and with death is is so like deeply tied into this. And and you see that with the with the Jordan River too. I mean that it flows from the foothills of 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 uh, Mount Mount Hermon and Bashan. Like those are all places of death. <laughs> you know like over and over and over again you have this idea right uh and this is something that's carried forward even uh in in some of the the hymns that you see um and and this this line really captured me let's see if i can even find it um there's so much stuff here oh that's right it's it's above um i like to write lots of notes and then i can't find them um but there there's a a hymn that's sung in the in the Orthodox Church, uh, the Resurrectional Politikian in the third tone, and one of the lines there is, "Beneath Jesus' feet, he is trampled down, death by death, and firstborn of the death of the dead, he has become. From the womb of Hades, he delivered us, and to all the world has granted his great redeeming mercy." And you think about that for a second. I don't usually think of Hades or hell or or Sheol or whatever in the terms of a womb right mm. but you start going through it and you think okay wait a minute noah passing through the waters there's this like death all around them and they come out the other side living right the people of israel coming out of egypt passing through death right um going into the promised land passing in the jordan river like all of these things are are examples of this idea of pressing through death and being brought through death into life or into new life. Uh, and so the idea of, of Hades being a womb for the, for those whom Jesus saves is kind of like, ah, Oh, <laughs> like, and, and that's kind of how it hit me. Yeah. Yeah. And on that topic of the womb, I've got a, uh, a dictionary entry uh, on the descent into netherworld hell mm. it was actually written by amar Anas, who is a uh, ancient Nusian scholar oh yeah uh, and he talks about this uh the parallel of the womb here if i can find the uh the word okay let me if i if i could if i could add to this actually i have uh pulled up here um a picture of the icon of the the resurrection here and what you actually have is christ emerging from 
something that is conspicuously birth-like. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's standing on the destroyed doors of Hades and even all the nails and hinges that hold the door together are on the ground around his feet. And so it's utterly destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's coming out in the exact same way that you're describing. Uh, it even has like a blue tone to, I think, in some sense, reflect the idea of water. Uh, and then there's darkness behind him. But even he himself is shining, being the light. And so, yeah, all of that stuff is represented uh, even in, in, in the, the, the iconography of these, these events here. It, yeah, you can't yeah. see it in that particular one, but but below him, even underneath the gates, is the strong man, yeah, who's bound, right? Um, so you have the binding of death or the taking of the power of death from him who held the power of death, the devil, right? So depending on, on which reference you want to go to, um, you have that, you have the locks and keys that are there underneath, um, being you know the symbol symbols of the restraints of people there and those being loosed um because uh, you know again kind of hebrews 2 14 15 you have that idea of being held in slavery by the fear of death it's like well we're not held in slavery anymore because we have the one who has come who has brought new life who can bring people out uh out of death and in through death into new life uh so yeah there's there's tons of layers of the of stuff in there in the in uh, iconography that I think it's really neat because you can you can just stare at it for a while and really kind of start to see connections in in things and go I wonder why they're connecting those things and then you can start going and oh the, well there's a tradition here and then you can go a little further back and you can go oh well that connects into these passages and some of those even connect back into some of the original context uh, like what Zechariah was saying uh, and and there's another connection into, into iconography and some of the original context I can I can draw later, but um, maybe we'll wait for that. 